The Wildcat struggles and the need for a new fighter outclassed by the nimble Japanese A6M0 and overshadowed by the newly designed high-performance fighters like the Hellcat and Corsair, the F4F Wildcat seemed to be nearing its end. Once a reliable workhorse of the U.S. Navy, the Wildcat had been pushed to its limits in the Pacific Air War. Yet despite its aging design, the U.S. Navy found itself in a desperate position. Its growing fleet of small escort carriers, often referred to as Jeep carriers, was highly vulnerable, and the Navy needed a versatile fighter to defend these essential vessels. Grumman, already busy producing the Hellcat, passed the responsibility to General Motors. The challenge was clear. Take the aging Wildcat design and breathe new life into it, making it capable of holding its own against the lethal Imperial Japanese Navy fighters. General Motors rose to the challenge, producing the FM-2 Wildcat, an upgraded version of its predecessor, ready to tackle the challenges of a rapidly changing aerial battlefield. The transformation was critical. This wasn't about achieving flashy performance records. It was about adapting a fighter to meet a specific and urgent need. What followed were several key engineering upgrades that would ensure the FM-2's place as a linchpin in the Navy's defense strategy. A game-changing upgrade. The most significant upgrade to the FM-2 Wildcat was its new engine. The FM-2 was equipped with the powerful 1350 horsepower Wright R1820-56 Cyclone engine, a substantial increase over the F-4F Wildcat's 1200 horsepower engine. This engine boost was a game changer for the aircraft, offering enhanced performance in crucial areas like climb rate and maneuverability. The increased engine power allowed the FM-2 to reach a climb rate of 3,850 feet per minute, almost double that of the F-4F Wildcat. In a high-stakes battlefield, where every second counted, this boost in performance made all the difference. Escort carrier pilots often found themselves racing against time to intercept enemy aircraft, particularly the fast and high-flying kamikaze pilots. The FM-2's superior climb rate allowed it to quickly engage threats before they could reach the vulnerable carriers and troop transports below. In a fast-paced aerial fight, every moment was critical. With its new engine, the FM-2 gave pilots a much-needed advantage. The ability to make that explosive climb and close the gap on the enemy before it was too late. A critical advantage in combat. In aerial combat, Firepower is crucial, but so is the ability to sustain that fire over time. The F-4F Wildcat, while equipped with 650 caliber machine guns, suffered from a critical flaw, its limited ammunition capacity. With only 240 rounds per gun, pilots had just 14 seconds of continuous firing before they ran dry, leaving them with minimal margin for error in a theater of intense, prolonged dogfights. The FM-2 Wildcat addressed this vulnerability by increasing its ammunition load. Each of its four 50 caliber machine guns was now supplied with approximately 430 rounds, nearly doubling the amount of ammunition per gun. This upgrade meant that FM-2 pilots could engage enemy aircraft with sustained fire for about 26 seconds, an invaluable advantage in the chaos of combat. The increased ammunition allowed pilots, particularly the less experienced ones, to correct their aim, walking their rounds onto the target rather than relying on a single quick pass. This enhanced firepower proved to be a game changer. The FM-2's ability to engage in sustained fire over longer periods helped pilots make the most out of each engagement, especially in the dogfights that raged over the Pacific. Stability and maneuverability. Solving the torque problem, the FM-2 Wildcat's new engine provided an incredible boost in power, but it also introduced a new problem. The increased torque from the 1350 horsepower engine threatened to twist the aircraft violently during takeoff and combat maneuvers. This was a serious issue, particularly for pilots operating from the cramped decks of escort carriers 
where there was little room for error. To solve this issue, General Motors engineers made a crucial modification. They increased the size of the aircraft's vertical stabilizer and rudder. This modification helped neutralize the dangerous torque, allowing the FM2 to remain stable and predictable in flight, even when climbing rapidly or engaging in high-speed maneuvers. The larger tail surface provided greater control turning what could have been a deadly liability into an asset that made the FM-2 a far more stable and effective fighter. Additionally, the FM-2 was approximately 530 pounds lighter than the F-4F Wildcat. This reduction in weight, combined with the more powerful engine and the larger tail for stability, made the FM-2 more maneuverable and forgiving, especially at lower speeds or higher altitudes. Where other aircraft might struggle, this combination of engine power, stability, and lighter weight made the FM-2 a more agile and deadly fighter, ready to take on the Japanese forces in the skies over the Pacific. The FM-2 Wildcat wasn't just a formidable air-to-air -air fighter. It also proved to be a versatile ground attack platform, essential for the protection of escort carriers and troop transports. While it couldn't match the speed of the Hellcat or the raw power of the Corsair, its true strength lay in its ability to adapt to the situation at hand. The FM-2 could be armed with two 250-pound bombs or up to six 5-inch high-velocity aircraft rockets, HVARs, making it a potent weapon for striking enemy ships and supporting troops on the ground. One of the most critical moments for the FM-2 came during the Battle of Samar, a desperate engagement between a small task group of escort carriers and destroyers, and a massive Japanese battle fleet. In the face of overwhelming odds, FM-2 pilots took to the skies from the cramped decks of the escort carriers, launching desperate attacks against the enemy fleet. Rather than trying to destroy the heavily armored Japanese battleships and cruisers, the FM-2 pilots used their bombs and rockets to harass, distract, and disrupt the larger warships. These attacks played a crucial role in the unexpected outcome of the battle, where the outgunned American forces managed to survive a powerful Japanese assault. The FM-2's versatility and ability to strike decisively, even when outmatched, contributed to convincing Admiral Teo Kurata to turn his fleet around preventing a potentially catastrophic defeat. In the end, the FM-2 Wildcat may not have been a glamorous star of the Pacific Air War, but it was a specialist designed to fulfill a vital role, defending the vulnerable components of the fleet at the most critical moments. Its upgrades were all about delivering results in a crisis, proving that a smaller, smarter design could have a profound impact when the stakes were at their highest. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to support our work.